Hello, my name is Eldon Matlick, the Professor of Horn at the University of Oklahoma. I'm going to give you a clinic now over number 59 out of Max Potek's book, Preparatory Melodies for Solo Work. First of all, let's look at this in chunks. This isn't as hard as you might think that it is. First of all, we're going to slow it down and I'm going to show you some really nifty special fingerings that will make this simply just roll off your technique. First of all, look at the very opening where we have the arpeggio on C, uh, starting on C sharp. It's an A major arpeggio. Keep your one and two finger down when you go to the lower E. I'm kicking the trigger off. So I'm playing the, the E, one and two, on the F horn, going down and going up. So it makes it really easy. Really easy and smooth, which is the exact idea of what we need to do with this. Now let's look at the next phrase. We can use some B-flat fingerings that'll help. So once we go up to the D and as we move through the B, G sharp, and E arpeggio, or the E major arpeggio I should say, you, we can do that all on trigger second. Yes, the G sharp is a little flat but it's not, uh, not terribly flat, plus it is the major third, so it will need to be tuned a little bit low anyway. So if you just play it straight, you're good to go. Now, let's look at the next phrase with the pickup to the second line. You can play this passage right here, all on the F horn. There's two ways you can do it. Just stay on the B flat horn. So second finger for your lower E. Works out really well. Others may want to play the E one and two by just moving the thumb off. Yeah. Either way, I'll be flat or either way, you can play it a lot easier than you can if you would normally make the arbitrary switch to F horn after the G sharp. Okay, now let's look at the next phrase where we go up on the A major arpeggio. What I would do is stay on F horn for the first three notes, one and two. And then switch to your B flat horn on the, on the A and C sharp. And then the rest of it you can finger normally. Now watch the rhythm in this second measure of this passage where we have the unequal triplet figure on the second beat. So if we're thinking of da di da da di di da so that 16th is halfway in between your eighth notes da da di da da di da da di da di 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 da da And another good thing to do is when you get to that 16th note put a little energy behind it to make it pop out Shorter notes take more energy to sound as loud, so you don't want to have this come out as a ghosted note. 
You can hear that clearly defined. Now let's, before we leave this, look at one more thing. The mark with the staccato and slur mark. Play this more legato. You could get by with just playing it straight legato, but this is from string technique. And the string player would play all these notes on the same bow motion with a little push. So if you slur this with a little bit of emphasis, like that, but then put a legato tongue with it, you'll have the style dead on. Now, let's look at the next line. First figure, going uh, the pickup into that first measure. Stay all on B flat horn. So the B and the E is on two. Now, let's look at the skeleton of this. And the skeleton is the following. Just do that a couple of times. Just get used to that rhythm and lilt. And I do the same thing with the next measure. And the next measure as well, you will stay on B flat horn. Then, you, we can put it all together. One of the things that you can do to make this even a little bit easier for you, instead of thinking those triplets, D, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, like that, think of all the notes going in the same motion as down. So we have two notes going down, three notes going down, two notes going down. And then with the pickup to the second bar, we have three notes going down, three notes going down, two notes going down. <laughs> that motion. Then when you put it together, a lot easier that way. The next phrase is probably the most difficult in this entire exercise. However, I'm going to show you some things to hopefully make this a little bit more manageable for you. First of all, don't play this any faster than what you can do. In fact, I think this passage, it being at the roughest, will be the determining factor on how fast you're going to be able to take this particular study. Don't take the, the beginning of the study any faster than what you can play this. So the first measure is normal. Then, once you get to the last measure, we can use more B flat horn. So once you play your B natural on the F horn, place your second finger down to play the E, G sharp, and B. And then, when you play the A and F sharp, add the first finger. And then, when you have the E arpeggio going down, play that all on the B flat horn. Two, 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 and three, two. It all comes out really well centered and really good clarity. Then, as we continue along, we have some of these slurs that come in on beat three to four. Give a little bit more spaciousness to that. Bring those out. Now, you do not have to do a physical diminuendo when you play those slurs going downward. If you use the same energy going down, 
a natural diminuendo will occur. As we move up in our range, we have to use naturally more air. So upper notes need a little bit more air. As we go down, we have to use a, a little bit more air too, because lower notes take more energy to sound as loud. However, in this case, we want the diminuendo. So all we need to do is just play with the same air as, uh, as what we have when we reach that C sharp, and then it comes down in a natural decrescendo. <laughs> Wasn't that great at the end, but you get the idea. Now let's look at this last little tag. You can use more natural horn fingerings on the first two beats of this measure. Once you play the A, the lower A, still stay on F horn one and two for the C sharp and the E. Then you return to the A with your B flat horn. Ba be ba 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 and it really makes it quite easy. And then a nice crescendo. And the last figure when you have the A and then when you have the rest of the arpeggio going down, lift the trigger off. Do that all one and two. You're playing on a natural D horn. Now, as far as tempo goes, when you play this for real, strive to get around 100, maybe 92, is about as slow as you would want to go. But it really is a rollicking piece. Now, let's listen to this in its entirety, and I'll put the music up with the fingerings in. 